areas in terms of how soon we'll see, you know, full rollout of the same. But the fact that, you know, the trial is promising, what do you think, um, you know, how will this help? Uh, because there's this whole aspect about fatigue, you know, when it yeah. comes to taking the drug. So what do you make of this? So it's a good advancement and the goodness is from medical practice, mm -hmm. it's about following the evidence. All right. And the clinical trials as a way of generating that evidence and confirming by the way, this product can work in this population. And when we look at it in terms from a pharmacy per standpoint, we use medicines and the convenience of the patient. It's yeah. not about me as a pharmacist using the medicines. True. I'm treating a patient. Is the patient convenient taking one medication one day at a mm -hmm. time or twice a day? Mm -hmm. Or do they want an injection that could tell us, say for example, a week or a month of use? Mm -hmm. So if that convenience is integrated in the design and actually mm -hmm. the formulation of that product that is being brought into the market, mm -hmm. then that is a win for us because we want patients to be able to get their medication. Let's say, for example, it's a once a monthly injection, mm -hmm. then that patient will go do their thing. Yeah. It, instead of having to remember, imagine if, if for this morning that we, we are here, mm -hmm. if I was to take my medication and I forgot, yeah. it means after the interview, I'll have to rush home, get my medication, medication. and then go to work. Yeah. How much inconvenience is that? Yeah. And those are the kind of dynamics. And I think with the evidence that is coming up, it's about us now looking at mm -hmm. how do we make it accessible past the clinical trials? Because mm -hmm. it would be good there's evidence supporting it, there's every support for what it needs mm -hmm. to do from a scientific standpoint. Mm -hmm. But if the patient doesn't get the medication, of what use is it? Yeah. It's like you're having a show, let's say, for example, in TV broadcasting all the information mm -hmm. and nobody's watching. True. The information needs to get to the people. To the people. And how does it yeah. get to the people? Mm -hmm. By people being able to consume it. So from the medical standpoint, having the medicines which are effective and actually re required by the patients and having patients use them mm -hmm. so that they are able to achieve the positive health outcomes that we are hoping for. They get well. Mm -hmm. If they were not sick, then if it's a wellness product, they're able to stay healthy. Sure. and thrive in whatever they're doing. At the same time. Yeah. Um, and of course, this, again, my opinion sort of help. Remember, we had, was it last year or the year before, the whole question about the shortage, um, you know, of, of, of yeah, drugs. So many people are not able to access it, yeah. um, you know, at the same time. So, you know, to what magnitude do you think this will help? Well, I can say HIV has really burdened uh, the health system and just the uh, outcome of patients has been very poor. Mm -hmm. And I remember we did a research uh, with colleagues of mine mm -hmm. in Karatina Subcounty Hospital where we were talking about factors affecting adherence to antiretroviral therapy. And what came out is the pill burden. Um, mm -hmm. The pills uh, patients have to take, yeah. uh, people living with HIV are uh, so many. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it, it, it becomes a hindrance on them adhering to treatment and eventually reducing viral load and all those things. Yeah. So this injectable ARVs comes as a good thing mm -hmm. uh, in terms of reducing that and enabling patients to stick to the remedy yeah. and trying to, like you said, uh, live a very healthy life. Mm -hmm. But we also say we are driven by data and mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. that is there. Yeah. So we, we want to put that in that context and make it work for people living with HIV in that, if that will help in you know, adhering, them to, adhering to treatment and producing a healthy outcome for Absolutely. them. Yeah. And then, of course, there's a whole question about stigma. And, and one would think, listen, we're in 2022, we should not be stigmatizing anybody, um, you know, on, on anything, mm -hmm. you know? But at the same time, the reality on the ground is stigma is still a very big issue. So again, do you think this will help with the same? Just go to hospital, get your injection, and you're good to go. Nobody has to know. You do not have to carry your medication, um, you know, around with you, or forget <laughs> to take your medication. I mean, stigma is always the elephant in the room for anyone suffering yeah. from any condition. Mm -hmm. And there are very many um, heads to, to, to look at from, if you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. I always say for stigma, you look at it from the reflection of the person looking in the mirror, so right. not from what you see. Mm -hmm. So from your view, you don't see it as a problem, but mm -hmm. to the person who's probably the perpetrator of stigma, or who is judging you for going to pick your medication, yeah. or who is a little bit harsh for you taking coming to work late because you have to pass by the clinic to pick your medication. Yeah. You have to understand from their standpoint mm -hmm. why that's why the, the notions or why they're behaving in that particular way. Mm -hmm. And that can only come through, and essentially most health changes can only come through mm -hmm. leadership and governance. Mm -hmm. Is our leadership doing enough to ensure that everyone understands the various moving parts in a health system? Mm -hmm. That even though we have a clinical trial that's ongoing that's saying there are good results, right. as a Kenyan government, what mm -hmm. measures do we have in place mm -hmm. that our people can get this medication? Mm -hmm. Because clinical trials will always be there and advances in medicine will always be there. Mm -hmm. But if our people cannot access medications that make their life 
more convenient, mm. then essentially they don't thrive at work. Okay. And coincidentally, the UK government does have a report called Thriving at Work. Right. How if you give people the environment, and it's simple things, mm -hmm. to be able to do the job at optimum, the country's GDP increases. Mm. So I think for me, this is a big question of what leadership and government strategies do we have in place mm -hmm. to ensure that our country is wealthy enough, courtesy mm -hmm. of the health of the people. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Prioritize health um, is, is basically